Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon from Guinea. Good afternoon to Guinea. Good, e good evening in Sri Lanka. Good morning in Indianapolis and Toronto and some of the other places that we are. We had a little technical get glitch to get started, but I think it was probably Kevin user error. I am so glad. Good morning. Bernadetta, Bernadette from Atlanta. We are so glad that you're here. Let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm excited to kick off Virtual LeaderCon 2021. I'm excited to have you here. Whether you're with us inside of Virtual LeaderCon or you're joining us on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and we are so glad that you're here. We'll talk about all of that in a second, but I need to bring someone up to join me if I can find her. Give me just a second. I need to get my co-host here with me and that was the wrong button give me one more second everybody this is the right button i'll get my my co-host here so glad that you are all here again whether you're here from virtual leader con specifically or whether you're here inside of one of the social platforms, we'll talk about all of that in just a second. But uh, hey, good morning, Adrian. I would have just kept talking about college football if you hadn't brought me up. Um, well, yeah. So uh, <laughs> no big shock there. Uh, and and we did virtual leader con last year. I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. And I know that within the first 10 minutes, college football came up. So I don't know. It happened again today. I don't know exactly why that is, but hey, here it is. Um, good morning, Adrian. Let me tell every, everybody who Adrian is. She is uh, the director of marketing and lots more here on our team at the Kevin Eikenberry Group. You've been on, you've been a formal member of our team. How long, Adrian? I never can remember. I can't either, but I think next year is 10 years. Well, how old is James? Well, I was going to say, I got to figure out how old my son is. He turned 10 this year and he was turning one the year that I joined. So next you know, March. 10 years next, next year. And uh, so I'm so glad that you're here, Adrian, to join me today. Adrian will be joining me as a co-host throughout today, really mostly at the beginning and end of the day. Uh, and we'll be doing a couple more times during the week. If you are here on one of the other channels, um, you're saying the rest of the week, I thought this was one hour long. Well, if you're on YouTube, if you're on uh, Facebook, if you're on LinkedIn, it is just one hour. But if you go to virtualleadercon.com, put that in the chat, virtualleadercon.com, you can join us all day, all week. We'd love to have you do that. Um, and, you know, um, Adrian, why don't you talk a little bit about, we've got people on the team that are doing different things, chat monitoring. I think it's you to start with. Uh, what do you need, what do you need people to do here so that they can get the most from this session? Yeah, so obviously you see already here on the right of your screen, I think it's on everybody's right, it's on my right. Um, that is where our chat is happening. We want this to be an engaging event. This is not meant for us all to sit here and be falling asleep or checking our phones. Last year, it was awesome. We all got to know each other throughout the week. By the end of the week, I felt like I had known people for years. Uh, so please engage over there in the chat, say where you're from, uh, chat with each other, talk, You'll see there's a couple of options to the left of the say something nice um, little field there. Um, that's where you can ask a formal question. Of course, you can ask questions wherever you want in the chat, but that's a great way for us to kind of monitor. Have we answered the question? Um, are there other people who are having the same question? I, last year, we really used that mostly as the place to put questions that specifically pertains to the session. Um, so if you want to use that, please do that. You will see that we are doing some polls throughout the week. So pay attention. Um, it's like everything these days on our phones, our iPads, or whatever. It will show a little um, number there. You will see it's a little alert that uh, there's a poll there that you can answer. So please, please engage there. Um, you'll also see how many people are here. You'll be able to click on people's pictures. Um, somebody further up already in the chat was so awesome and told you how you can change your profile picture if you want people to see what you look like, if you want to put your favorite football team. Um, if you want to put the if you want to put the Hokies there, even though they lost this weekend, please feel free. Okay, listen, Adrian. There are people in Cambodia and Sri Lanka. They don't even their football is even different shape than ours. So you got and to be. If they want to get involved with American football, I can give them a team to start with. 
Anyway, so that's the chat. Um, do you want me to go into some of the other logistics now, or am I waiting on that? A little well, bit? Let, yeah, no, well, let's get to some of that other stuff in a second. I want to tell you, for if, again, if you're watching one of the other locations, we did not do this last year. Our, our Crowdcast, our process here allows us to multicast or simulcast to these other platforms. And so we're doing that for one hour each day uh, on, on those platforms. But if you want to join us more than that, uh, obviously, if you're chatting or commenting there we've got someone watching that is going to alert me if there's specific things we need to know uh, but we can't engage with you in the same ways as here so just go to virtualleadercon.com if you're in one of those other uh, social platforms and just join us you can do that quickly and then join us here now or you can do it after the session to join us after that someone in the chat just well I, i'm sure that marissa has already done that in the other places virtualleadercon.com so you can join us for any other time throughout the course of the week. You wouldn't want to miss at least a little bit more time. So the question that Adrian and I get asked often when I tell people what this is. So why do you do this? Why are you doing this? Why are you investing your entire time, all of your team's time, and a whole week of your effort and losing some sleep and all that stuff uh, to do this thing? Well, you know, last year we did it. Uh, because we were trying to help people deal with everything related to the pandemic and all of that. In fact, um, that relates to our first poll. We didn't. Uh, here's the first poll. Uh, people are already answering. I attended VLC. That's, by the way, shorthand in the Kevin Eichenberg group for Virtual LeaderCon. I attended last year or I didn't. And so far, it looks like 27% did. Uh, and then putting me we'll do polls throughout the course of our time um kevin does this because he likes to be exhausted no here's why we do it we did it last year in part because of the pandemic but here's the big reason why we did virtual leader con last year and why all, by really acclamation of this team after we finished last year that we said we'd do it this year and that is that we are in the, our stated mission is we're in the business to help leaders organizations teams get better results in short we want to make as many leaders as we can, make as big a positive difference as we can in the world. And this is one of the ways that we can do it. And uh, and so that, you know, th this is on mission for us, right? And and so specifically for this session or for this week, uh, it's our job and our hope to engage leaders in a powerful community, which you already are experiencing here and again, if you're in the other channels, you've got a community there, but we hope that you'll come join us here for more during the course of the week to engage leaders in a powerful community and inspire them to act and therefore lead more effectively. Right. And so it's called Virtual Leader Con. It's about leaders, but it's all about leaders as human beings. And so I think about this as being about leadership development, professional development. Uh, whether you're a, a leader for a long time, you're just getting started, you're an aspirational leader. I um, mean, we're glad that you're here. Um, Adrian, I now have the wrong screen up. So I'm going to call audible number one of the day. Could, do you have this? Can you quickly uh, walk us through the schedule for today? Sure. You I mean, could... um, love an audible at 10, 12 on Monday morning. You mean the sessions that we have coming up? Yeah, just just if you'll just name them, I'll say a moment or two yeah. about each one. I just already have my slides up here. So that's yeah. sort of a Absolutely. So obviously you're kicking us off first, but after your keynote, we've got Minter Dial, who's doing Why Being Yourself Makes You a Better Leader. Um, yeah, we're going to talk. So, so let me just say this. Most of our guests today uh, ha were, were on Virtual Leader Con, la con last year. Um, so, but all of the sessions are new and, and less than half of the total speakers are the same as last year. So even if you are in that 30% or so of folks that were, are back, um, it's, it's new and back and better than ever. So we've got Mentor Dial coming, coming to us to talk about us as leaders. And it's a great place for us to start. Go ahead, Adrian. Um, Chris Dyer bringing us meetings that don't suck. It's always good for a Monday. Uh, Ryan Gottfriedson is doing, you can't expect to be a great leader without vertical development. And that might be the first new phrase that you get this week, vertical development. You're, you're going to love that session with Ryan. Go ahead. Meredith Bell is going to be speaking on what you can do to create a coaching culture. Uh, Nate Regeer back as well. Inclusion and compassionate accountability. It's all about the next conversation. Okay. Bob, Bob Teedy is going to do something on a session on leading with questions. 
Then we've got Jan Rutherford, The Solitude of Leadership, Leadership Lessons from Crucible Expeditions. And you'll find out what those are, as well as learning to be a more self-reliant leader. And then we've got one more. Yep, then we've got Walt Rakowicz doing five ways aspiring leaders succeed in a transparent world. You're gonna love Walt because for a couple of reasons. One is he's super smart, but the other thing is he also comes uh, as a former CEO, major leader in a big organization. So, you know, what we've got all week, Adrian, and, and you know, I've talked about this is we've got, we've got, yeah, we've got authors. Yeah, we've got consultants. But we've also got folks who have started companies, run companies, led big companies, uh, who wear Super Bowl rings on their finger. Uh, so we got all sorts of folks with all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of perspectives to help us be successful as we go. And each day we have a sponsor for our sessions and our sponsor for, well, you're welcome, Lisa Neiman. Good to see you. And Tamara, I'm just looking in the chat. It says, I've been so excited that I can hardly contain myself. Well, you and me both, Tamara. Um, uh, so we're excited that everybody's here. And uh, so our sponsor today uh, is our workshop from manager to remarkable leader. And yes, there's going to be breaks. And and by the way, uh, our Lisa was a big, lots of people, including our Lisa on our team, big proponents. We got to have the breaks. One of the other things that's different from last year, Adrian, is uh, here was here's what Kevin was thinking. Oh, we're going to have breaks. This will be easier for Kevin. Not necessarily, because last year on many days we had some some uh, recorded sessions. So during a recorded session, Kevin could you know kick back. There are no recorded sessions, Adrian. This is all live, one hundred percent, all the way through. So there you go. Um, if you're if you're here and you know you can't be at all of it, and you're saying it's like I think about this. This is like live television. You can watch it all you want, but if you want to binge later because you have to go to a meeting or something. Your bladder is thankful. Uh, that's almost too much information, Tamara, almost. Um, and, you know, you can you, you can get access to all of this later uh, with, with, a, with a premium registration. Virtualleadercon.com slash upgrade gives you that information. I think the team can put that in there, virtualleadercon.com slash upgrade. And you can also, Adrian had this idea. People may not want the whole week, but they've got a day. There's three people on Wednesday that they want to hear. Um, you can get a day pass. So you can pick the day that you want. You can buy a couple of days instead of the whole week. Uh, virtualleadercon.com slash day pass. You can do that. So it's all free. Hope that you can be here. But if you can't, you don't want to miss it. Or if you want to go back to it, that's where you can do there. So um Adrian, you want to sort of walk through the rest of the logistics? We're going to have, we're going to give away prizes. Yep. We're going to do all sorts of stuff. You just want to walk through the rest of the logistics here? There's yeah, a bunch I'm of gonna, logistics. I'm going to talk really quick about the session since we were just talking about all of the people that we've got coming this week. You'll see here, since I believe most of you guys are logged in uh, through the Crowdcast system, um, the way that the way that it works is each session is, um, is in a new Crowdcast session. So every time we've got a new speaker, what you will have to do is scroll down on your screen and enter that next session. So it will not continue in the same window every time, the same exact Crowdcast session. You'll have to just scroll down, click the link, and enter that next session window. So keep that in mind. We will remind everyone at the end of every one in the chat over here. Everybody scroll down. We'll see you in the next window. So... Um, you will um, make sure make sure that you are scrolling down and, and joining the next session as each one ends. Um, as Kevin said, uh, we are doing a bunch of prizes throughout the throughout each day as we did last year. I'm sure a lot of the folks that were here last year, hopefully many of them won. We were giving out tons of books from the speakers, tons of our own books. We were giving out journals. There are a lot of prizes and a lot of opportunities and ways to win. So make sure that you are listening in each session. Uh, Kevin will be pretty explicit about exactly how you are going to win the prizes. Um, some of them are asking questions. Some of them are um, answering throughout here in the chat. Um, and then there's also using social media. So we will be monitoring all of our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And at the end of every day, uh, we will be choosing a social media post as a winner of another prize. So make sure that you use our hashtag, hashtag virtual leader con, and you will uh, be entered into another drawing for a prize. So participating in the chat, posting on social media, 
asking questions. And then the last piece is by inviting other colleagues or friends to join us. So uh, if you invite at least five people to join us and they actually sign up and you let us know, you will win what Kevin is calling a swag bag. All kinds of awesome um, treats there for anybody who encourages at least five people to sign up and join us for Virtual LeaderCon. So I'll post that here in the chat in a moment, or I'm sure a colleague will beat me to it. Um, but yes, that's one of the things in the swag bag there, those fun coffee cups. I'm still waiting for mine. I'll invite five friends and maybe I'll get one. Um, well, invite five people, you marketing director, you. No, we're going to give you a mug. We're going to give you a bunch of other stuff. Uh, somewhat still to be determined. Um, Aiden, I asked you a question in the chat. I don't know if you saw it because uh, five books Aiden won last year. Um, I don't know if that was the most. Um, I know that Laura spent a lot of time sending out books last year and we hope to do the same this year. We're also going to give some stuff this week, uh, Adrian, that doesn't require shipping. Yes. Right. And since, t and since today's uh, since today's sponsor is uh, from Manager to Remarkable Leader, our so one of our flagship workshops, led, designed and led by me, um, and it's being delivered virtually, we probably will give one of those out today. Maybe two. You never know. Um, that, By the way, uh, virtualleadercon.com slash leader, if you want to learn more. There you go. Way ahead of me. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, that. So did we get through all this? I think we did, right? It's back to me. I think so. I think those are the logistics. Like I said, engage, so, talk, participate, have fun. Each day, uh, I got to find my notes. Each day, uh, we're going to open, uh, well, it isn't open, clearly, uh, with a, uh, a an inspiration we're going to call Kevin's Inspiration. Because that's as, about as creative as I could be with that, Adrian. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, so each day I'm going to do that, and each morning I'm going to create that for you on that day. And so here it is right now. Uh, our inspiration for today is is I want us to focus on today. Today is the day. Um, you know, there's a reason it's called the present, because today's a gift. And we should open it up. You know, we we all have so many days in our lives. You know, you know sometimes I think, I don't know about your kids, Adrian, but... I, I sometimes think at Christmas or even at a birthday, my kids, there's so many gifts and it's almost like, well, it's just another gift. And that maybe says a lot about me and, and, and my, and Lori, I don't know, but, but I think that we have so many days in our lives. Well, it's just another day. It's not another day. It's today. It's the only one of these we ever get. It is the present. And, and I really want to encourage you today to live in the present. I mean, not just today, but every day to think of it as a gift, to live in the present. And so I wrote down some things that I think that get in the way of us living in the present. And uh, one is our worries about tomorrow. So I'm going to say this for you today as we're here, but it applies to any day because we'll probably use this video at some other point, Adrian. Um, to just put aside your worries for the day. If I could do a whole session on worry and how many of the things we worry about never come to pass. But the minute the all of the time that we spend thinking about that worries in the future, regrets about the past, we can't live in the moment. So uh, my second piece of advice for you is to be grateful about what you have around you. And so I, I would just challenge all of you right now to do this, to look around you wherever you're watching from. And whether it doesn't matter if you're on a social channel, doesn't matter if you're here uh, in, in Crowdcast, just write in your chat one thing that you see in front of you right now that you're grateful for. Just one. And just share that with it because some of those things that you're grateful for, others of us, we can celebrate with you, number one, and, and we can acknowledge and maybe be grateful some of, for some of those same things. So... We can stay in the present by being grateful for what's around us in the present. Great answer, Dan. I can't see mine. Um, she's working in another spot, not in this building. Um, the next thing that we can do, and now I'm going to get extremely practical, and that is we got to get rid of or minimize the distractions. And I'll bet, I'll bet this is one of them right here. You all got one of these, right? Maybe it's in black. Uh, it's a distraction. Mine's on airplane mode. 
You don't want to hear it. I don't want to look at it. The resource, the research says that if it's in our field of view, it, it distracts us. Now I needed it right there because I knew I was going to use it this morning as a, uh, as a prop, but, oh, look at that, man. I love the stuff that's coming in there. My phone isn't even on my desk. Cindy, Cindy, you're going to win the very first prize of virtual leader con. Uh, Cindy Thomas is going to win one of our brand new version of our journals. Now you won't have it this week, Cindy, but you're going to win this. So here's how, so here's how you, here's how you uh, get that. You have to send a note to, exactly. You have to send a note to info at virtualleadercon.com and email. There you go. And put in your mailing address because this is physical. You can't mail it to you. Uh, it can't email it to you. So, um, Man, I love all of that stuff that you all are saying. I work in a converted walk-in wardrobe. By the way, Aiden, things to be grateful for. There are lots of people using closets, wardrobes. I think that's what we would call what you're calling a wardrobe uh, because they can easily soundproof. Lots of people are using them to do recordings of podcasts, believe it or not. So Aiden, you can, you know, time for you to start a podcast perhaps. Um so if we're going to remove our distractions, we have a better chance to stop multitasking, which is a myth. You all know that, right? Like you really can't multitask. You can do two things kind of well at best. But you can't do two things super well. It's a myth. And when we're multitasking, moving from thing to thing, we're not in the present. We're just living in busy, which is one of the most dangerous four-letter words, Adrian, uh, much to the dist. I'm sure my grandmother would have disagreed with me that there are more dangerous four letter words, but um, busy is a four letter word. And, and so that's what I want you to do. I want you to let go of the regret of the past. I want you to try to let go of the worries for the future. I want you to be grateful for now. I want you to put away the distractions and I want you to experience your day. I want you, if you're here with us right now to make this a day of learning, or an, or an hour of, or a session of, or a, a, a time of learning, to ask yourself the questions. We're gonna learn a lot about questions from Bob later today, but ask yourself the questions of, how can I apply what I'm learning here? And if you do that and you're living in the present, this will be of great value to you both today and any other day that you choose to do that. There's your inspiration for the day, everyone. And uh, now that I've been babbling on, Adrian, uh, is that question in there something we need to, to handle before we move on to the planned part of this program? And you're all like thinking, please, something planned instead of just Adrian and Kevin. Um, is that something we need to deal, deal with? I was, it was a question about whether people use this for their continuing education. And I would say the answer is probably yes, depending on exactly what the requirements are for that one. There will certainly, most of them are pretty loose in that it's out, you know, it's a certain number of hours of leadership content or professional development. And there's no doubt that there's going to be just a few hours of content throughout this week. So absolutely, I would say that this would 100% uh, contribute or provide continuing education credits for that organization. Yeah. And if doing, and if in doing that, you need anything from us to help us, just, you can send a note to info at virtualleadercon.com and let yeah, us know. Sometimes you need a little bit about the organization or a letter um, proving that you are here. So certainly if you need that, just send a note to that and we'd be happy to provide some documentation that you, that you attended and the number of hours and something like that. So. So why don't you, why don't we get all formal now since we haven't been, why don't you introduce me and then we'll dive in to the three keys. Yeah. So I, I, as everyone can see over here in the chat, there's quite a few people that know Kevin um, and have been following him for years. But for those of you who don't, Kevin is a uh, expert on leadership development and learning. Um, he's been doing it for over 30 years now, helping leaders and organizations across North America um, and worldwide um, to be better leaders, have better teams, communicate better and just be better organizations. Um, he's also the chief potential officer of the Kevin Eikenberry Group. He's been named to many, many um, big lists, uh, twice been named by Inc.com as one of the top leadership and management experts. Um, and like I said, has been included on a lot of other lists as well. He's the author, co-author, contributing author to 
20-ish books, I think is the number. Many of yeah, them, exactly. many of them, which you might be able to win throughout the throughout the rest of this week. Um, Remarkable Leadership, From Bud to Boss, which is our new supervisor book. Um, and then our two most recent ones that he was a co-author with Wayne Turmel, who you guys will hear later this week, um, The Long Distance Leader and The Long Distance Teammate, as Kevin will show. And as again, I said, you will definitely hear from Wayne and we will certainly be talking and speaking to a lot of what happens, what is uh, included in that book. Um, I, I think that's, that's the uh, official. All right. Well, thank you, Adrian. I'm going to send you away. I'm not going to send you away. I'm going to take you off camera. I think I have to do that. Maybe you can do that yourself. I think I can do that. Maybe. No, I think you have to get rid of me. I can close my video, but I'm pretty sure that I'm still there. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me get rid of you. You're already invited on. I've got to remember how to take you off. Remove attendee. If it removes you, removes you. You have to come back. Sorry. Well, I'll try not to take it personally. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I just want to do this. I figured it out, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Different button. There we go. Um, let me uh, spend a few minutes with you all doing what we promised as the rest of this morning's session. And I want to share with you some thoughts about... Uh, there, you can see my slides now. Awesome. Uh, three keys. Uh, about what it means to be a remarkable leader or three keys to remarkable leadership. And and I created this title and then I, uh, yeah, I need to close that message. So it, when I when I was thinking about actually creating the session, here's what I thought about. I thought about the desert island because it's a desert island question. The desert island question is this. Uh, if you could only take one book to the desert island, what one would you take? If you could only take one CD to the desert island, CD, I'm old, I know. What would you take? So this is a, a desirable question. Can we get leadership distilled down into three keys? It's very desirable. It's a, it's a seductive question. It's a difficult answer. Uh, so what I've tried to do is to create for you something very specific, uh, and then we'll get uh, so, sort of very high level and then get very specific about it. So here are those three keys. The three keys to remarkable leadership are a helpful mindset. Um, and, and this is really sort of where we're going to head for the next 29 minutes. A helpful mindset, a needed skill set, and a congruent habit set. So some of you have heard me say mindset, skill set, habit set are the key, which is absolutely correct. And these other three words matter a lot. In other words, we all have a mindset. The question is, do we have the mindset that will help us be the kind of leader and get the kind of results with and through our team that we want? And what are the skills? And that's a very long list. We're only going to give you a short list of that today. Uh, I actually want to share more about that on Thursday when I talk about what it means to be a post-pandemic leader. Uh, and lastly, a congruent habit set. So those are the three things we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. And I'm looking forward to doing all of that with you. And so first of all, a helpful mindset. Well, in order for us to be a highly effective, we would call it remarkable leader, we have to have a helpful mindset, which means we have to be super clear about what our job is and what our job isn't. And we use this model, we call the 3-0 model of leadership to help us be clear about what our role is. We'll start at the center, not because it's all about us, but because as leaders, it is about us. And this session is really about us as a leader and what we bring and who we are. And so who we are as a leader does make a difference. The style that we bring, the approach that we bring, our perspective, our background, all of those things are a part of what we bring to being a leader. But it's those other two blue circles that are what leadership is really ultimately about. Leadership is about reaching valuable outcomes with and through other people. Now, if we're a solopreneur, I suppose, uh, then the outcomes all belong to us. There are no others. It's not really leadership. It's just doing work. But the reality is that as a leader, it is about other people with and through others we're going to be trying to get. And I think you could look at this picture as a lens for the entire week of Virtual LeaderCon. How do we get better outcomes for our organization, for our team? How do we determine what those outcomes are? 
And how do we support others? How do we coach others? How do we help others? How do we understand others so that we can get to those desired outcomes? That is our job to reach valuable outcomes with and through others. And so a helpful mindset says we've got to be clear about what we're here for. A mindset that is required really for us to be remarkable leaders is to have a, a belief in ourselves, a level of confidence in ourselves, and to have belief in others as well. In fact, I'm going to play a little game and I'm only going to play, I'm going to use two people that I see in the chat right now as my examples. So there's nothing else here other than that's what I'm picking. All right. So I want you to imagine that both Tamara and Heather work for me. Just imagine, and they're both saying, please, no, I don't want to work for Kevin. Uh, but let's imagine that Tamara and Heather both work for me. Let me tell you about Tamara. She's a rock star. She's unbelievable. She should probably already have my job. If, you know, if I just get out of her way, she can achieve pretty much anything. Tamara is a rock star. I am so glad that I have Tamara on my team. Whatever I give her, you know, she's going to take care of. Well, he Heather is also on my team. And well, let me tell you, I like Heather. Heather's, a, she's really nice. I really like her. She, bless her heart. She works really hard. She tries her best. Heather, man, just be honest, Heather's pretty much living up to, she's like pedaling as fast as she can. She's getting her job done. She's living up to where she can be. She's, I'm glad, you know, you're going to have some C performers on your team, right? Tamara, rock star. Heather, pedaling fast. Now, question for all of you. You can put this in the chat. Here's a question. Which one of those two folks, Tamara the rock star or Heather the C performer, is going to be more successful working for me? Which one? Just in the chat real quickly. Which one? Based on only what I've told you, which one's going to be more successful working for me? Tell me in the chat. Give you a second to think about it. Yeah, Tamara the rock star. That's where the answers are coming in. I know there's a slight delay. Here's the thing. Yeah, Tamara is being nice to Heather. Look at that. See, I told you she was a rock star. So why is that? Well, both of them, hopefully both of them, if I'm the kind of leader I want to be. But let me make my point. My point is that my belief in Tamara is saying all sorts of things about what I do, the opportunities that I give her. It may be unconscious, it may be unintentional, but because she's a rock star, in my mind, I'm gonna likely give her more opportunities, different opportunities. I'm gonna give her a little more grace if she messes up. I mean, think about it. You got someone who's really awesome on your team and they make a mistake. What's the first thought that you have? Well, you know, everyone makes a mistake. It's okay, no big deal. Next time she'll get it. But if you got someone that's like barely getting by, make, meeting expectations barely, what do you typically think about that person? Well, you know, what did you expect? Made another mistake, right? The comment in this says, if you give kudos to both and support and believe in them both, they can both succeed. And Michelle is absolutely right. But the point is that in my back of my head, the minute that I label them in my head, I'm setting the table for not treating them equally even if it's not intended. I would say that for us to have the mindset of a remarkable leader requires that we realize that our folks have potential. This does not mean that everyone can be, a, 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 be proficient in every single possible role, but do we ultimately believe in our folks' ability to be successful? If we don't, we will not be as successful in coaching or leading them as we could be, right? Kevin is going to burn me out. No, I'm not, Tamara. I promise. And by the way, we need to, Heather, you need to send a note to info at virtualleadercon.com. We're going to send you a journal because this was just, I just had to pick a name, right? So Heather, you, you drew the short straw, but you get a journal as long as you send a, a note with your mailing address to info at virtualleadercon.com. The next mindset we must have, and I know that right now I'm what I would call preaching to the choir. Like you wouldn't be here if you weren't a learner. The folks who aren't don't see themselves as leadership learners aren't here. So I don't need to say more about that one, but it's true, right? You say that the part of the process in asking each what are their own goals are, well, there's no doubt, Eric, that I, that I need to understand where people are and what their goals are. I'm going to get to that a little bit more in a couple of minutes. But I would say, in short, 
100% yes. Here's the next one. You know, we are living in a time with plenty of challenges around us, right? And I believe that a remarkable leader has a mindset of opportunity. So I want to show you something on the next slide. I know there's a little bit of a delay between when I say it and you get it. So I just want you to look at this and, and think about what you see. Bunch of letters there. What do you see when you look at that? When we look at the world around us, what do we see? Now, there's two things that this could be depending on how you actually look at it. And here are your choices. Do you see opportunity is nowhere or do you see opportunity is now here? Remarkable leaders see opportunity. They say, yes, there's challenges. It's not, it's not about uh, ignoring challenge. It's not about uh, dismissing problems. It's about where's the opportunity in here? I'm going to look around and find it because it's here. That's the mindset of the highly effective, remarkable leader. Opportunity is now here. I believe that this week, opportunity is now here. Um, which if you get that, one, if you have that mindset, then you have a mindset of possibility. And a lot of people think about positive thinking. Uh, Robert Schuler famously talked about possibility thinking. And I think it's important that we recognize that we can be thinking about possibilities. And back to Heather and Tamara. Oh, I opportunity snow. Okay, very nice. Uh, here's the thing. If we if we look at our folks as rock stars, if we recognize and see the potential in our folks, then we see possibility. So we can connect that possibility one to really all of those above it. There's a connection to the opportunity mindset. There's a connection to the learner mindset, of course. There's a, there's a connection to the belief mindset and the role clarity as well, okay? And then... The mindset of accountability. And quite honestly, up until about an hour and a half ago, I had a couple of more slides in here about accountability, but I took them out. And here's why. Because I know that when we're with Nate later today, we're going to talk about accountability. And I know that tomorrow, I'm going to talk about accountability in this same time slot a little bit more. So I hope that you just recognize that there's a mindset of accountability that is necessary for us to be highly successful leaders. And again, more on that later today and tomorrow. So those are just some of the mindsets that are keys to us being a more effective and remarkable leader. So now let's get on to some skills. Ah, accountability is still on this list. This is not a mistake because accountability is both a way of seeing things and a skill set. And again, more on that later. But it is both a willingness to see the world in a way and the ability to take action. And so it is one of the skill sets. If we want our teams to be more accountable, we got to be more accountable first, because if we're not, it's not going to happen. The next skill set that we need, uh, I'm going to comment on your point there and just, let me just do that, right? Uh, can you, Tamara says, can you hold someone accountable or is that something that a person holds themselves to? I'll say more about that later, but I'll just say this. There is a time, perhaps, if someone's not meeting, living up to an expectation that's clearly defined and mutually understood, where we may need to sort of hold them accountable. But I believe we are far better off most of the time to focus on helping them be accountable rather than holding them accountable. That's why accountability is such has such a negative connotation for so many, because we never bring it up until someone's screwing up. I need you to be accountable, right? Hopefully that's, that's helpful, Tamara, right? Um, so as I look at the time that time that we're living in now, where we're making, you know, there's going to be a lot of discussion this week about um, the future of work, about hybrid work, about remote work, all of that. It's going to come up. I know it will uh, throughout the course of the week. And I, I think if we don't realize that everything that we're going through and have been through, gone through is all about change, we're missing the point. But the point for us as leaders is highly effective leaders have the ability to lead change. And so building the skill set of being a change leader, not just a change manager, but a change leader is a critical one. And again, later this week, I'm going to spend some time in this morning time slot talking about that. 
And the next one is influence again, coming up later today, again, coming up later this week, both from others and from me. So I don't want to, I'm not going to dive into that deeply, just sort of preview that. And then the next one then is communication. I'm going to dive a little bit more into that one because I'll come out and say this. First of all, what is communication? Communication is message sent, message received, and message understood. And too often, and I've taught this uh, way more than a hundred times, too often when we're the, we all would agree with that as a definition of communication, like everybody, right? Yeah, I, I, I hear your point, Michelle, because here's the thing. It mutu mutually understood is more than just yes, boss, right? It's more than just compliance, if you get that right. So, and then Michelle, you give us a good strategy for how to make sure that it's truly mutually understood. Exactly right. Because see, what Michelle is saying there in the chat is my point here exactly. I can send messages. I can tell Michelle what the expectations are, but unless she receives them and understands them, we didn't clearly have communication. And I, I can tell you that while all of us would agree with this definition in some way, the reality is that too often, me included, maybe me at the top of the list, we, we say things like, well, I sent them the message. Well, I sent them the email. I told them. How many times do I have to tell them? It was in the PowerPoint. Why don't they get it? I sent the message. But see, that's not communication. Communication is, did they get the message? Is it understood? What do I need to do to make sure that they get it? How can I influence that reception? And Michelle's point about asking them to state it back to clarify or confirm understanding is part of that, is a part of the, the solution to that. But communication is too often we stop at, well, I sent it. I told them, right? Um, I, I'll come out as, as far as to say you can't lead if you can't communicate. There's a mindset there that message received is the key, not just message sent. There are skill sets, right? Like highly effective leaders can communicate effectively one-on-one. -on -one. They can communicate in groups. They can master the various mediums. Of, of a meeting, of a web platform, of the phone, of your instant messaging. Like there's all these mediums, right? And being able to get good at enough at all of them so that the medium doesn't get in the way of our message so that our message can get received. And, and, and lastly, I would say that we must remember as leaders that we are a conduit of communication in two ways. Conduit is a pipe, right? Both ends are open. So here's the thing. As a leader, we are the voice and the face of the organization to our team, right? They look to us for, for messages, for understanding, for strategy and all that stuff. Like we have a role to play to send information downward to our team but we also have an equally big responsibility to send information upward. We are the face and the voice of our team to their greater organization. And maybe more now than ever when not everyone's in the same building. When your boss and your boss's boss don't ever see your people at all. And so we are a conduit. We must take that seriously, a communication conduit, right? Yeah, as the, yes, George Bernard Shaw, the illusion that has taken place. And then, of course... There's a habit set related to communication as well, right? Here's the good news and the bad news about communication. We're doing it all day long. Um, so the good news is there's continuous opportunities to improve at every moment, every time. So worth us considering, worth us thinking about. So leadership is influence. As I've already said, I, I, I meant for this slide to come out. I'm, you know, I'll just leave it in for just a second. I'm just going to say this first two things because I know this will come up again. And I know that I'm going to talk about influence later in the week. So my fault that I left this slide in, but let me just say this, that we're going to talk later about the difference between control and influence and what we can control and what we can only influence and our ability to understand that our ability to influence is massive, is important. And secondly, that we should be as remarkable leaders aiming for commitment and not just compliance. We don't just want people to say, yes, boss, and then go do it barely. We want people to be all in. We want people to be committed. And I'm confident that that this dichotomy will come up again later in the week. And we can't be highly influential until we get past compliance and focus on commitment. Now, just close your eyes. I'm going to slide through the rest of the slide quickly. 
All right. Um, inclusion. It's part of the, you, you heard Adrian say earlier that uh, we're going to have Nate Regeer come on. He's going to, one of the things he's going to talk about is inclusion. And, and I'll just say this, and there's no disrespect to what I'm about to say here. Inclusion is more than the third bullet in DEI. So if DE and I is something you're doing in your organization, diversity, um, and now I'm missing the E at this moment, um, uh, right? Uh, diversity, equality, and inclusion. If we're doing that because we have to comply with something, we think we ought to do it, That's it. We, we need to do that. We need to have a better understanding that for all of us, 100%. Inclusion is more than about that. Inclusion is about what we do all the time. It's the ultimate, thank you. Took me a minute to get there, but I got there. Um, it's more than that, or or maybe you stated best. The level of inclusion that I'm talking about is what we're ultimately trying to get people to with DE and I. It's to try to really, at a deep level, change our bias around how we include others in everything. And uh, so again, I know that will come up throughout the course of our week in multiple ways. And the comment that was earlier about understanding people's goals relates to this one. And I've been talking about empathy now for a lot for the last 18 months, all through this time of this pandemic. And, and I believe as leaders that we are, we are living in an age of empathy. I, I am hopeful that, that leaders that have figured this out will remember it when things, when we no longer are saying the word COVID every day or thinking about a pandemic every day that we are living in an age of empathy where hopefully we're learning something that we can apply long into the future. It is a skill set. And, and let me just say a little bit more about it because here's the reality. The reality is that people are polarized, they're hurting, they're unsure, they're lonely, they're isolated. They're also ecstatic. They want to be together and they also want to work at home. Some of all, sometimes all of those things at once. That's the reality. And the other reality, there's not enough space on the slide. The other reality is not everyone feels about this the way you do. So empathy is about recognizing that we're not all in the same boat, even if we're all in the same ocean. That we're not all experiencing the common experience of a pandemic in the same way. And so to be empathetic, we need to recognize that reality. We need to slow down. We need to listen to our folks more with our eyes on the webcam, uh, with our ears. We need to listen more, which means we need to ask more questions, which means we need to do that sooner in the conversation rather than later. We need to assume less and ask more because once we assume we no longer, we, I know where they're at. I know how they're doing. We need to ask more and assume less. We need to acknowledge and not just judge. Because, because whether it's on the polarization piece or whether it's on the why are they having mental health challenges, I'm not. It's not about judging. It's about acknowledging, hey, that's where they're at. Maybe we need to grant people more grace. Well, not maybe. We need to grant people more grace. Remarkable leaders will do that. And they will focus on feelings first before they get on to the work. Outcomes and others. Yes, we've got to get to the work. Yes, we've got to talk about the issues. Yes, we've got to talk about the problems and the next steps and the deliverables in the project. But we also have to focus on where people are. That's what empathy is. Tamara says we've got to grant our self-grace too. And I'd actually argue that until we can grant until we're willing to grant it to ourselves. We may not be willing to grant it to others, really, at a deep level, right? Here's another way to say it. This is uh, this is my way of stating the Oprah principle: that is, uh, self care isn't selfish. Like if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't take care of our teams. Not possible, right? So, folks, sign for feelings first. So uh, we've talked about some skill sets. Ever since I wrote the book, Remarkable Leadership, which is a long time ago now, hold up a copy of it right here. Uh, ever since I wrote this book, uh, in this book, I talked about the importance of expectations. 
and I've been leading a team for a long time. And I, and I think you could ask team members who are here, how good I am at this, uh, that I do a pretty good job most of the time of setting clear expectations. And I've always known that setting clear expectations is important for leaders. I think in the last three or four years, I've become profoundly aware of exactly how important it is in part because I coach so many leaders who aren't doing it very well. And I see so many of the problems and challenges that leaders are facing that boil down to the root cause of unclear expectations. And we could dive into this a whole lot more than we have time for right now. Let me just say that there are three kinds of expectations that we need to make sure are clear. And this goes back to message sent, message received. Are, do you know as a leader what you expect of your folks? And, and if you say, well, I'll know it when I see it, that's not good enough because how do they know? And I can promise you that no one's job description re says, read your boss's mind. And so we've got to make them clear for ourselves so that we can clear for others. And making them clear for others ultimately comes down to three areas. And some leaders are pretty good at the first one, which is the what of the work, like the timeliness of the work, the quality of the work right? The work itself. And if we're good at one, that's the one we're good at. But what about the why of the work? Do people know where the work fits in the context, what it gets used for, who uses the output? Have you ever had, just give me a yes in the chat while I talk about this, if you've ever had this experience where you knew what you were supposed to do, like the bar was clear, but you didn't really know what it was used for. You didn't really understand the context in which that work was done. Like you just delivered it. You put it over the fence. You handed it in. You just did it. <laughs> Maybe that's most of school. I don't know. Um, but have you ever been in that spot? How does that feel? Do you feel confident that you're being successful? No. Are you able to actually use your intelligence, knowledge, and experience to make adjustments? No, because there's no context. And it was completely not what he was looking for. Yeah. And, and so we need to get good at creating expectations about the what of the work as well as the why of the work. What's the context? Who uses it? Where does it fit in? We want to help people have meaning in their work. This is one of the ways we help get it. And then lastly, lastly the how of the work, the work process. Incredibly, incredibly important. How are we going to do the work, especially when we're in a remote working world or a future or maybe even current hybrid working world. What's our work process going to be for this work, for all of our work? This set of expectations applies to individuals, of course, also to our teams. So there's another skill set here and that's learning. Ah, we had that on the mindset list. It's also on the skill set list. I could do a two hour session for you on how to be a better learner, how to put learning into our real life. I've done it lots of times. We don't have time for it here. But this list wouldn't be complete to be a remarkable leader without it being on this list. And I realize this is an incomplete list, but I wanted to give you some things to be thinking about, some things that I know that you can get insights on and ideas about and information about during the course of our time together. Um, let, me, let me go back. Before I go to the have said, I, was, I haven't said it, I want to say something else. Because someone in the chat, and it scrolled through, and all I did, have to wear these glasses so I can read that, was someone said about transformation. See, that's what I hope that this week is about for you. Whether you're here for five more minutes or whether you're here for the rest of the week, you're going to get a lot of information. But what we're hoping to help you do is to transform yourself, transform your mindset transform your skill set and change your habit set because remarkable leaders have a habit we all have habit sets we all have habits the question is is it congruent with what we want or not that's the key is it congruent with what we want right um so when i ask people in workshops i've done this 100 times uh, think of someone you think of as a really great leader and then think of some and give them some minute to do that. And then think about why it is they're so good. And almost always in that list of characteristics of great leaders, I hear they're a role model. But guess what? Every leader is already a role model. You already are one. The question is, are you 
leading in a way that you want them to follow or not. That's why congruent is the key here. Are, it, do your habit sets, your daily actions, your routines, the things you do when you're not thinking, that's your habit set, do those line up with the mindset and skill set? Do they create a model of what you want your folks to be following? So we need to consciously look at our habits so that we can decide two questions. Are they helpful to us? Are they congruent with what we are trying to accomplish? And then if we don't like the answers to those, the question is to adjust them, right? Learning isn't just for studying or listening. It's for taking information, applying it to your life. I'm going to share one of my favorite questions later in the day, Michelle, about that. Um, when Bob TV's on with me, we're talking about questions. I will share with you my favorite question. Um, here, here's where I want to land the ship, if you will. And then I'm going to uh, add Adrian back before we finish. Um, I believe that whether you just got something from this session or whether you're going to be here uh, one more session, one more day, all week long, that Virtual LeaderCon can help you build helpful mindsets, needed skill sets, a congruent habit set, build a, build a community of learners that you can learn with, and a whole lot more. That's why we're here. And all of that leads to being a remarkable leader.